So that's true. And if we step back, the past few years have been quite transformative for the power sector. We've just gone through a major stress test with the energy crisis. And what we can say is that the debate that followed has highlighted some of the gaps of the current electricity markets and the reforms are trying to fill these gaps with a range of long-term instruments. More concretely, what we have, I think, is a market that works well and has demonstrated during the crisis that sending short-term signals that are efficient and signal scarcity to consumers is essential. But it has also proven that we need better hedging opportunities and we need long-term contracts to support the investments required to finance the energy transition up to 80 billion euros per year in the power sector, for instance. That's false. All long-term instruments are needed depending on a specific hedging needs. For instance, generators need to lower investment risk, either volume or price risk. Consumers need protection against volatility and also, decarbonization has to be recognized, decarbonization efforts made by firms. So we need complementarity between different hedging tools and we need to preserve forward market liquidity. That's very much true. Um, and I think the design is essential in at least three different ways. First, uh, what we should uh, keep and preserve is the ability to react to short-term price signals in an efficient way. And what that means is that parameters uh, such as the reference price, the strike price, and the reference volume in the CFD will have to be chosen carefully so that the generator keeps having incentives to react in the short term in an efficient way to the, to the system signals. The second thing that's important is also to consider that CFDs will have to coexist with a number of other long-term contracts, such as uh, voluntary private PPAs, for instance. And the design of CFDs can be uh, key to maintain an incentive to, to preserve uh, a lively private contracting market. The third reason why the, the design matters is because in the end, the benefits or costs of CFDs will have to be channeled through to consumers. And clearly the way in which this is channeled, uh, so the design of that um, feedback loop is very important to have the demand side on board and to make sure that the demand side has also efficient signals to respond to the system. True. We believe that non-binding dynamic guidance for public de-risking schemes is needed to ensure that member states implement two-way CFDs in a manner that is market compatible and system friendly. In the near future, some tools might coexist as in the market as CRMs, CFDs for REST and nuclear, and flexibility support schemes. Guidance, as already said in the electricity regulation for CRMs with design principles, will help to harmonize the operation of these instruments in the market. Yes, there are a number of trade-offs to consider in designing CFDs. First, how much risk should generators and investors bear? Um, that's an important question because on the one hand side, it's important that there are efficient dispatch incentives uh, for generators. On the other hand, it's also important that um, they can manage these risks efficiently, uh, hedge them and, and therefore um, invest. Second, I think there is also a trade-off in how much the CFDs would be the main pillar of achieving the renewables or clean energy targets versus other tools, other long-term contracts, such as voluntary contracting. And an efficient design is one that would give space to all of these mechanisms to coexist. And third, um, it's also important to consider the, the consumers in the end. Uh, 
Um, as we said, CFDs and other long-term contracts are also a way to enhance uh, hedging opportunities and to provide additional leeways um, to pass through the benefits of clean technologies uh, to consumers.